today we're going to cover a lot of ground. And while we're at it, wait a minute. How? Yow. Hey. Take a lot of pictures, man. Take a lot of pictures. I don't mind the cold so much that this rain is going to get to be a pain in the ball. I think, I think what happened was is that he, he had created a, um, <coughs> a Facebook page, this uh, Justice for Lucy thing and, and for this dog. And Today the team members just got done. Do you mind if we film in here? Sure. Or do you want to let us to let you know when we're playing on film? No, no, no. Okay. Um, okay, one thing I was going to ask about if there's any like clients or anything that you know we can do shots like from shoulders down if people didn't want to. Uh, I don't know if there was any issues with that or no. All right, cool. If there is, we'll we'll handle that at the time. Generally, I believe in transparency, so. I believe we should be able to just be straight. Yep. You guys want some uh, bars? I'm good for now. Yes, sure. I'm good, thanks. I'm sorry, I'm horrible with names. What was your name again? Uh, Dale Brown. Dale Brown, okay. Especially when I meet a lot of people on the road. So mm -hmm. like Last night busy? Um, no, no. Calm, calm in our area. Last year, <laughs> we had two guys. We believe the same two guys. Breaking into houses. One of our communities is running from house to house, like across the community. And so we were kind of like, Police officers responding to things that have already taken place, which we do not like doing. It was terrible. In other words, we get there and everything's already over. Mm -hmm. That's not how we typically function. Um, but it was so many. There were so many trick or treaters. <laughs> it's hard to tell, you know, which goblins were the criminals, which goblins were actually <laughs> kids. <laughs> so they were able to camouflage themselves with the trick or treaters. So how do you guys get the, you get, like, how do you, you get a call or something like that, or? We have a thousand customers in the area. That's one of our vehicles there. Doing? Awesome. Good. 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 Let's finish it up. Excellent. Want to meet down at format one? We'll okay. see you there. Okay. So in other words, you only get like calls from when your customers are having an issue. Like you don't have access to police van and stuff like that where you can take their call or anything like that, right? Oh no. No. We don't want we don't want to do anything that crosses over into what they do. 
because we like to get there before things happen so we can stop problems from happening. Our objective is to create a condition where nothing negative takes place, not try to figure out what negative thing is already taking place. So what we do is we, we scan, we do not patrol, we don't believe in patrolling, we believe in scanning. Scanning is defined as three separate actions that we do simultaneously. Deter, detect, and defend in that order. So our objective is to deter situations from taking place, detect situations before they can actually be implemented, and defend people as needed from violent criminals. Uh, we're pretty much, uh, we're just kind of riding along today with him, documenting some things, and uh, mm -hmm. Uh, put some related videos online and just try to share ideas with people. So yeah, I, if you want to uh, maybe introduce yourself, whatever capacity you feel comfortable, and then uh, maybe how you came to be here today, how'd you get in touch with the management center? Okay. Okay. Right now? Yeah, sure. Oh, okay. <laughs> so um, I uh, came in contact with, uh, became familiar with threat management um, last year, last uh, December, when I was uh, physically attacked by an individual and uh, the prosecutor's office, I was trying to get a PPO cert at that point in time and because I wasn't working, you know, didn't have the money to go pay the sheriff to, you know, do all these things, they suggested that um, threat management was a place where uh, domestic violence victims could come and they would assist in getting the PPO cert. Um, threat management did all they could to try to serve this individual. Uh, unfortunately, he had been on the run since he was just arraigned over, just over a week ago. Um, so they weren't able to get him served uh, initially. So then I got the call to um, come to court for the prelim. And I was informed that 36th District Court does not have police officers in the courthouse anymore. They have a hired third party security. The only police officers are the ones that are actually in the courtroom per se, if they're actually in there. So at that point I was feeling a little uneasy about um, you know, going to the court date and, you know, wasn't sure if I was going to run into family members or, you know, of, of the uh, <clears throat> of the defendant. So, once again, they referred him back to threat management. They said for, you know, domestic violence cases, um, they will, you know, provide you an escort to court, make sure that, you know, you get there okay, they'll sit with you during the whole process, and then escort you back to your vehicle. To me, that was like light shining, you know, all that good stuff because I, I really, I was at a loss. I didn't know what to do. I'm thinking like, you take the police out of the courtrooms and then you want victims to just come and go. And, you know, I've heard of, I know personally different people that, you know, have been in situations like that, that they were attacked, you know, just trying to get back to their car, you know, after uh, the court date. So, um, so the first court date was last Thursday. Then they were lollygag lollygagging. Um, the attorney that I was with uh, even did a wardrobe change in the middle of it all. This is no joke. The judge called him out on that and um, so ended up getting adjourned. So then, you know, we're here today and so at this point it's been held over. Uh, I think I did pretty good. Um, he was getting pretty frustrated with me. The judge even has to tell him, she's not going to answer your question any other way, you know, so. I don't know. I just, it's, it's just, I mean, it's really... I had no idea that you guys like even did what you guys do, you know, and I'm not like a, I know there's people that have been in domestic violence situations and it's like they're repetitive. They're, this was like a one shot, like, oh my God, out of the blue type of thing. And I would never go down that road like ever again. But I mean, just the service that you guys provide, it's like just the sense of knowing that, okay, I'm going to be able to get into the courthouse, be able to give whatever type of testimony I have to give. And I'll be able to get back to my car safe. Even just that sense of, you know, that sense of security is, is priceless. It's priceless. I mean, I, I don't know. I ramble. So, so I'm not so really going to stop. You said that you learned about the Threat Management Center. It was like lights flashing. And now you're saying it's... Uh... 
you know, well, yeah, it was like, because so the pressure yeah, was like it's going to be good, but it's it's uh, you've been yeah. I mean, and, and I knew that whatever you know, whatever his attorney was going to bring, he was going to bring which he had no ground to stand on. That's what the judge just shut him down today. Like you know what, uh, it's time to go. But just the sense, like I said, the sense of security, the sense of knowing that I'm going to be able to get to this court date safely and get back to my car safely without somebody following me, without somebody jumping on me on my way from the courthouse to the parking lot, you know, all those different things. Just that sense of knowing that I am the victim in this case, you know, I shouldn't have to act like more of a victim than I already am. You know what I mean? So just that sense of being able to, like I said, just come and present my case and come and, and show up without being like, Okay, uh, you know, somebody gonna jump on me, you know, when I leave here, or just just a sense of knowing that it's like, I mean, seriously, it's priceless. It removed it the really feeling is. of terror from you. It, it completely, and then it was really refreshing because um, the two um, individuals, I can't, Officer Kosak, I don't want to say the name wrong, but the two individuals that escorted me were the same ones that were last week. I know that doesn't happen all the time, you know, but it was it was, it was even just nice to see the same face you know, that I saw last week when I was there, and, you know, you kind of get a, a, a bit of rapport that makes you even more comfortable, you know, to know that, yeah, we're here for you, you know, and that and that's one of the things, what is the catchphrase you guys always say? I think that is, I think that's what it is, we're here for you, or something like that, it's something, whenever I called, or whenever somebody called me back, they're like, you know, we're here for you, we're here for you, and that was the thing that always stuck in my mind, like, we're here for you, you know, so it's like, I know some people don't have, you know, maybe people to right. support yeah, them or whatever the case may be, but um, it was comforting to hear. Like, you know, they're completely, you know, on this cause, and they're here for me. I'm good. You know? Excellent. Yeah, I mean, it, it really was. Well, well, so, yeah, that. so I gotta say, I'm, I'm a talker. Well, I'm glad you're happy. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm glad so you're happy. So so this is the purpose of this program uh, in our bodyguard section mm -hmm. and, and the volunteerism that is required to be a part of our program is the people like yourself that you know they don't want to feel that sense of terror and yeah. fear and uh, we come in and our whole objective is to remove that from you so you can feel comfortable yeah. about exercising your legal rights yeah so we're glad to be there for you yeah I, and i appreciate it like i said because last week he was trying to do the whole witness intimidation thing the judge called him out on that you know, he was like, you know, doing this whole looking to the side and all this, you know, trying to look behind. Just like, what are you looking at? What are you looking at? Face forward, you know, kind of a thing. But um, he didn't, he didn't pull that today. You know, he didn't pull that today. And I don't know. Like I said whatever it was, if it was from what the judge said last week or just the sheer presence, you know, of the security that I had with me. He's just like, you know, uh, forget about it. You know. That's good. Nice. So. Well, it was very nice meeting you. Thank you so much. I appreciate you guys' services more than you know. Yeah, it's not, not the most ideal situation, but I'm glad you were able to connect with him. But, um, and she has a very interesting background, so you probably want to ask her about that. Okay. So would you mind? Her? This is Laura Croft. Oh, yeah? <laughs> interesting. Yes. Yeah, real life version. Real life. She's like born legacy. Interesting. She's like... Uh, <laughs> I'm glad she's connected. She's involved in the own. But she's like positive born legacy. She's like... Uh, she get a quarter of quarter blood to drop out of my body. <laughs> but she's a positive version. Not a secret agent, bad person. Yeah, nice. Uh, uh, but yeah, if you wouldn't mind, this would kind of be a cool background if you wouldn't like to mind maybe stay on that. Or is it cool to stay on this okay. I was thinking how about because if you can get it behind that and get the whole. This is good lighting. Yeah, you're welcome. Where do you want me to just you? Uh, whatever uh, it's called. Yeah, I'm just like observing that. Yeah, it will be around. But, uh, but yeah, so if you just. Anything that we talked up or touched on, if you'd like to uh, weigh in on any of that, like maybe some of your background or what, why you got involved or what the mission today was like or experiences here? Uh, today's particular mission was a victim protection at a courthouse, and we provide a service that provides the victim with sound, a sound mindset so that they can be able to testify and do what they need to do without fear of threat, without fear of, of being harmed by whomever is pursuing them in whatever way, shape, or form, and that's invaluable. That that in and of itself is invaluable. Nice. Um, what uh, what motivated you to get involved with threat management center, or how did you learn of threat management centers? I, I uh, learned through threat management center through a variety of social media, online 
references. Uh, I got involved here because their methodology in tackling a situation is a little bit more positive than come in and kicking butt, taking names, you will do what we say. Their, their way of, of facilitating a situation is more positive. They use psychological uh, downplays to get an individual to voluntarily leave a situation. There's no there's no lawyer fees, there's no prison time, there's no money involved. It's just everybody goes their own way peacefully and with all their limbs intact rather than coming in and taking names. So obviously uh, while you're here there's lots of training, you're learning new skills, but you probably came to the table with some skills of your own that were relevant. Can you touch on that? I've been a military police officer for the last nine and a half years. I just got back from Afghanistan, spent two years there. My profession over there was to train Afghan female police officers with basic police knowledge, tactics, firearms, police taking. Nice. Uh, what would you say, uh, what was, what's been the most surprising thing about being involved with the management center? Uh, just the way that they handle things. It's, I've never, I've ne I, this is a unique company in that they, I've never seen a protective agency offer so many services, one, two, uh, be very community involved, and number three, just, again, the way that they handle things is very important because violence begets violence, and this way everybody goes home happy. Can I just ask you one thing? Yes. Were you, were you, when you came back from Afghanistan, were you looking to get into the police? Or and that's how you... Um, I more or less wanted to stay within the law enforcement slash protective tactical field. And would you say that a similar service is being provided by law enforcement or is it something that's unique to threat management and other services? I think the way that threat management services deals with things is significantly different than the way police deal with things. Being a police officer, I have been able to see both sides of the fence, if you will. Police are more trained and adapted to handling things aggressively because we are the authority. We are the law. You will do what we say. Whereas threat management services more asks the person to think of a situation prior to commencing whatever they're intending on doing. Uh, anything else you think we haven't covered that you think folks might want to know about or you think important to share? Just the reason I like this company is it's just the way they handle things differently. That things don't always have to be handled with violence. And um, in this particular, with this particular company, they focus on protection of women, children, victims, and not necess in, uh, usually within the state, federal system, that's not really the priority. The priority is prosecution. Here it's protection. Excellent. And would you mind introducing yourself? If, you don't have to say your name if you don't want to, but if you if you wouldn't mind, I mean, if you if you don't mind sharing your name, I don't think we got that on, on film. But That's fine. My name is Andrew Navar. Thank you. Good. Uh, do you want to leave a question here? Or ask? Sure. Uh, yeah, if you don't mind introducing yourself and tell us uh, what you do. My name is Shadon Walker, and I'm a team member here at SCG. Threat Management. And how long have you been working with Threat Management Center? Uh, approximately four weeks now. And uh, how would you find your, or what has uh, attracted you to Threat Management Center as a career? Well, what attracted me, I was already in the line of doing security. And once I came in, interviewed, and did my research and found out more information about it, it was the positive things that they do for the citizens. Uh, were you always interested in private security? Or were you considering law enforcement at all? At one point, I considered law enforcement, and once I entered here and found out the positive things that they do for human life, I thought that was remarkable, and I wanted to be a part of it. And uh, in your four weeks here, what have you experienced, or has there been anything you know notable that's beyond your expectations? Or well, I had a lot of training, which was really exciting to me because it was a positive way. It built a lot more confidence in me on being able to do my job more effectively. The more one-on-one, -on -one, because they do do more one-on-one -on -one to make sure that you do your job great. Uh, I have also helped clients, and I enjoy doing it at the time. 
and I see the appreciation come from the clients as well. And uh, how is uh, Threat Management Center uh, utilizing technology to make your job easier and to make the community safer? Documentation. To me, documentation takes you a long way. Everything that we do is documented and we communicate through our documentation as well. So that is a big plus. Also, anytime that I'm out on patrol or on site, there's always someone in communication with me, so we are always linked in together. So if I ever need any assistance, I have someone there immediately for me, which in one case I did need someone there, and they did respond immediately and proceeded to help me. Cool. I don't know if you have anything, Pete. Um, so you mentioned one thing that attracted me for a management center was how they interact with people, not like forcefully as much, but try to bring about a peaceful solution. Uh, has that, can you expand on that, how that differs from what you perceive with police sometimes responses? Or? Yes, it's, it's not directly with being aggressive, which is a plus. They you humanize everybody, they make everybody human, and we remain human and humble, and which I respect that because then I don't have to go in with intensity on trying to seduce somebody, just break them down. I can go in and more off talk to them. A lot of people react better to a conversation than to you coming aggressively towards them. And you can resolve a lot of issues just by communicating in a positive manner. Body language tells a lot about how part of your outcome is going to start in a possible way that it may end. You guys film each other? I mean, you have like dash cams and stuff like that? You said dash cams? Like dash cameras and things like that? No. You, you record when you're out there in the field and doing your thing? No, we have iPads and iPhones. Okay. Yes, that's what we utilize at this time. You film every time you have an interaction with a client, you're supposed to film is that correct? Yes, or, or situations. We film, or in any kind of situation that goes on, if it's alarming or not, and we're taking care of anything, we do film to make sure that's part of our documentation. I'm satisfied. I'm good. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I like the point about, uh, you know, we remain human and humble. Huh? Yeah, Thank exactly. Thanks. Yeah. You know, nine times out of ten, when I got problems with officers, it's because they're, eh. Man, what do you want? What are you doing? Give me your ID. Okay. And, and I'm like, I don't take that kind of crap, you know, so. Exactly. <laughs> See, yeah, because we don't harass. Yeah. yeah. You know, we, we more of how can I help you? Because if I can stand with you and help yeah. you, then maybe, even if you are the aggressor, maybe you'll calm down and you'll feel that I'm seeing it your way. Not that I am, but I want to make you feel that way. So that way, if anything takes place, I have you calm enough to be able to get you away and save the other person that might be in harm's way. You also give the aggressor a second to think about the ramifications of his actions. True. Too, so. And you could bring yeah. him back down to earth. We'll try to get on his side, like if he's the aggressor and he's yeah. in my face and wants to do something. Mm -hmm. We'll always come down his up So look, let me, let me come around here and talk to you. Right. We'll get this way so we're, we're not like this. Right. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. We're, we're on his side, and we're, you know, we're not manhandling him. We just touch him. Say, look, man, okay, okay. If he does go and, and continue, you know, then we can come to different things here. But generally, always, always take their side. Mm -hmm. And you know, nine times out of ten, they're, oh, let's go over here and talk. Let's come out of the way. You know, we don't want people watching. Just you and me, man. Come on, what's going on? Unless there happens to be the, you know, what they're going to go for probable cause today. But it is, it is stated as a state law, you cannot wear a police-styled badge in the state of Michigan what unless you are law enforcement. Yeah. Um, it, 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 that's totally up to them. Yeah, exactly. Totally. It's you interpretation. You have no guidelines for what you're calling a style, yet I can't, you know. Do you mess with play to play with the big clocks on the neck? No, right? But why are you messing with me? You know? Yeah, they... Um, yeah, there, there's a lot of lags in this state, like handcuffs in the state. You can't wear handcuffs in this state unless you are a security officer, a law enforcement officer, and a security officer that has to be part of a PA 330 status um, situation like universities and hospitals. 
But of course, security guards do wear bad, uh, badges and they wear handcuffs all over the place. Handcuffs like a belt. Mm hmm. Yeah, they can arrest them. With that's handcuffs, right. is it specifically like the metal locks or would it also include zip ties? Uh, handcuffs, so what would be called handcuffs. So if it's not called a handcuff, i.e., zip tie, then they couldn't hand, they could not arrest you for having zip tie. They could if it was handcuff, right? Mm -hmm. Now, if you got a hand, a zip tie that said handcuff on it, I'm sure that, that would be. Don't make the connection. Or, yeah. Right. But you, that's why we carry something called fence ties. Right. There you go. <laughs> yes, it's a fence tie. Yeah. Now, in this situation of exigency where some craziness takes place, you will take your fence tie, tie in one hand and hand and then like that. That's it. And like that. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, there will be fence ties with no handcuffs. We never. And, and one of the reasons is I actually had a situation. Um, we used to work for a, uh, a client who used to legally take people's businesses from them. Uh, what he would do is he would give them 51% control. He would, he'd make a deal with them, giving them a lot of money. Then they would, uh, the business owner would take the loan and agree to give them away 50% uh, percent controlling interest of their company in the event that they cannot repay this money in a certain amount of time. What this guy would do is study how much time it would take you to pay it back, how much money you have, and make sure you can never pay it back. So at this X date, six months later, he takes over your business. He used our organization as his internal management, security management, which he hired us as his internal employees to we security, so not security guards, but his internal management company security. So he takes over this particular bar and happens to be on Halloween in 1990, maybe 1998, 97. So he takes it over, right? We go in and we start throwing people out, the people he doesn't want to employ there, and uh, the customers are all told to leave. And some of the officers, some of the customers were police officers, and they called and said people are doing a fake raid on this location. <laughs> so 30 officers, 30 police cars, probably 60 officers converged on our location surrounding the building. Uh, there were two lieutenants, four sergeants. <laughs> They came forward, and we were all standing in a, in a line. It was uh, eight of us. And they said, okay, are any of you armed? We said, no. They said, do any of you have any handcuffs? We said, no. Are any of you security officers? We said, no. He said, why are you all dressed the same? I said, because we're all from the same self-defense school, so we all wear the same clothes. He said, okay. He said, so you know if you had handcuffs, you know if you had badges, you know if you had any, does anyone have any kind of badge on? No, sir, no badges. You know that if any of you had a badge on, if any of you had handcuffs, if any of you had a firearm on you right now, we would take you to jail. I said, yes, sir, I understand. He goes, all right, have a good day. And all 30, 60 officers left without incident. So it's understanding the law and how it applies, it's vital, right? So we're still able to effectively manage this client's situations simultaneously not violating the laws in a way that could lead to a prosecutorial outcome. Very important is to understand psychology, law, and skill in that order. In Cleveland, I don't have to worry. It's, it's, as long as I'm not going around saying I'm a cop, I'm, right. it's not you know, against the law to wear it. Yeah, to have it. Yep. Yeah. And here, it's only a problem if they won't have a problem with you. I, I've seen many security people wearing badges that say security on them.